Washington DC, the capital city of the richest and most powerful nation on earth. In the last Congress, lobbyists spent a staggering amount of money. Now what a return on investment, $700 billion bailout. It's about power. You wonder why civil rights are being violated. This is the ability, for example, to determine whether or not your son goes off to war. They have more lobbyists than there are members of Congress. How can so many people relate to only 535 members of Congress? It's mostly behind the scenes stuff. The right word in the hall or the right expression can make a world of difference. You have lobbying organizations that offer 500,000, 700,000, a million dollars to some of the more prominent uh, members uh, who retire. The line between those who are inside and outside of Congress is not very clearly drawn. It, it might seem undemocratic that lobbyists uh, write uh, legislation oftentimes. You can redress your grievances. That is an inherent right and it's something that we, we need to protect. They're campaigning all the time. That revolves around this this uh, uh, persistent, endless quest for money. You have to really spend so much time doing this fundraising. When do you have time for the public business? You knock on that door just so many times. It's ethics light on the hill. This is a constant struggle. There's no beginning, middle, and end. There's only a middle. You see relationships developed over time. You see favors done over time. Many of them would walk over both grandmothers late end to end with pleats on, if that's what it took to get elected. It's sapping their energy, and it's it's dulling their idealism. Oh, oh my gosh, public funding is a, uh, who's, where does it stop? There's a tiny group that tends not to favor it, and they're called incumbents. Uh, and as it turns out, they're the only ones with votes. The bottom line is it's a business. 